Amen. This is the work of the Lord. Then product of all the work of the Lord is that he dwells with men forever and ever. Amen. Just one second, I'm going to send one more invite to Brother Pedro. Amen. Yes. I was not able to sign in through my cell phone. I'm using Shanna's cell phone to sign in. Oh, okay, okay. I was able to make it. I don't know what happened. I was somewhat lost uh, with my time. I was already making a draft of the message. I ended up losing the track of time when I went to see my Instagram. I had to restart it all. And then Shanna arrived and started with her Instagram. Is everything okay with you all? Sorry, the saints were following us. It's lost almost 20 minutes or so. Really my fault. I was not able to sign in. So how about you? How are you all? How are you? Um, after the conference, share with us a little bit. Amen. We were doing well already with the fight. The, the pillars are rising. Share a little bit about the spiritual situation after the conference. Amen. It was a sphere of much joy. I felt that the saints were very happy, were very glad, even before the conference, since Germany to Portugal. And then on Monday, we had a moment in the airport, which the moment at the airport was a great explosion, seeing all of the churches in Northport. Very, very glad, very united. I recorded a few videos because it was very impactful. And how about you, Ernesto? What about you, Ernesto? I'm very glad, Brother Pedro. Very glad to follow closely the word from the apostle. Much joy. And after the conference, we had a contact that went to the conference. He was very, very glad. Ernesto, it seems that you have a I have a problem with your audio. If you're able to put an audio, especially for today, because it seems that the audio is getting cut off. Sorry, I apologize for that. If you do, but if you don't, it's okay. We'll try, we'll try to do it. Yes, it's cutting. Very good. Now that you are very Sincere, short of words, sort of words. Kyle and Ernesto, I asked a question and you, you answered I it asked you a as question. in a telegraph. <laughs> you guys responded so, telegraphically. So, Lord Jesus, Lord let me Jesus. then read. I'm going to read. Hear what the co-workers what the wrote co to me. That to me. I think it better translates because you don't want to <laughs> share much. It's wrote it to me, dear brother Pedro. We are very grateful to the Lord and also to you for your visit to Europe in the last days. Started with a period in Germany where we witnessed things that we haven't hadn't seen. Miracles on streets, scope orders on all the streets, a very rich fellowship with much genuineness and spontaneity and joy. A broadcast of Pack, which was vibrant, happened in Germany, right? A new and fresh word, the church meeting, with fruits from co-porting already present, and culminating with historical broadcast outside of the box, released by a living testimony of the life of an organism that we are living because of the circulation of the prophetic word. The feast went on to Portugal, where we had our conference companionship, the joy, 
experience these days uh, raise in us an organic partnership among us where we could strongly know what is in your heart, which is not the same, which is actually the same in God's heart. Each day in each fellowship, saw God's operation in us in the churches. Such an ex fact is so real that many brothers and sisters are already getting themselves ready to prepare for the next coming. The uh, testimony of co porters and everyone present is uh, unspeakable, nothing forced or prepared, but it's the result of the operating of the word among us, pointing out the imprint left in all of us, not only in the word, but also in the single pers single behavior of doing the will of the Father. Europe is in feast because our God is a God of feast. Let us keep on uh, persevering in apostle stitching, fellowship, and offerings. This is a message on all of the servants, co workers of the Europe River Peter. That was the son of the co workers. But it seems that you were not able to translate that. So let's give you another chance. Share with us a there, little bit. It seems that let they're a little shy. Some fire. And um, that that letter was able to translate very well. I thought it was only the after. No, but it's true. In Germany, I went to have the fellowship with Brother Pedro with the saints there. I thought it was going to be more of a fellowship, more of alignment, you know. But I was very surprised with all of the miracles that happened that occurred there. And I gained a lot with this with this topic of following closely, of truly following and accompanying. We were able to even do a few visits. And then after when we would go out to have lunch or to go out for dinner, in the middle of the restaurant, we would do war cries. And then there was a, a German restaurant that there was a waiter serving us. And then towards the end, he already, he he knelt before us to receive a prayer from everyone. He was one of the employees of that restaurant. And then in another restaurant, also there was a mother and a son. They were very touched of, of seeing, of only viewing our fellowship, this living organism, seeing this overabundant joy flowing from us this is the main impact because the true joy because we were all very glad and there was no way for us to to receive anything different and then Matthias he was translating into German and he was very touched and they stayed with the kit with the literature and everyone from the the restaurant they were admiring it but it was just a lot of joy true joy I gained a lot from these fellowships and of course, throughout the conference, it was uh, it was just a plus, you know. Amen, Ernesto, it's with you. Can you hear me? Amen. Yes, it's better now. Now, for a fact, it was a true privilege to follow and truly take knowledge of the presence of Brother Pedro here in Europe. We had the privilege of myself, of my wife, and myself. Uh, so of us leaving our job so we can follow closely. We followed closely Brother Pedro in Germany to receive a lot of life, right? Through this order, through this command of, you know, more prophetic words from the heart of the Lord. And we enjoyed all of this. Uh, you know, the brothers shared this a little bit of how to transmit it, the true joy of being close to the prophet, close to the prophetic word. And we saw his work in each fellowship and each dinner throughout the conference and the lives. And even to take the opportunity before saying goodbye, I had the opportunity of going out, co-porting to execute the, the side of the, the prophet. 
but the prophetic word it makes us compromise. You know, to listen, to listen to what the prophet says and execute the order of the Lord right away. It was of much joy, just like in Portugal. It was just a great privilege. We we went out on Monday to do a visit in Mercedes. And then we went to like a factory, near a factory. I was next to Brother Pedro the whole visit because there were two engineers. They were seeing the stuff of the works, right? Just the work. And they were just chatting and chatting. And we spent there the whole day. And then I noticed, I realized it was, it was getting tiring because we spent the whole day out. But then we arrived to the to the place and then we were going to have dinner and was all ready to record the live. So Brother Pedro had time for nothing. I was truly impressed by this. I even looked at him. There was a moment of his eyes closing. I was like, wow, he must be very tired. And then he started the live. It's a, it felt like it had already a script. I was like, what? How did that happen? I was with him the whole day. And then it seemed like the revelation came out. I was very impressed by this, to see the revelation. I was very impressed. There were brothers there, the saints there. A lot of saints you now that, that were more elderly. But it was there was even new people there, new contacts. And they were all full of energy. They already wanted to go to the next meetings, the next fellowships, to continue meeting. Really, that day was really tiring. No, oh, that day was truly in the morning. It was, it was we tiring. had a, a visit because to we, we were visiting the different factories, the, the tours, the Mercedes Benz factory, and then we went to an important. But we we visited Stuttgart. Moving the, all the, the system, the highway system, and then we got to later to the meeting hall for the for the broadcast. I was really tired, and on my way, Josman spoke about that word homeostasis. Then I thought. We should apply this word to the church. Showing to the saint of the church, it is really a living organism. It's not a religious organization. That is why, since we have a short time, let me just tie in to message five that we shared in Portugal, that when the enemy, he gave the first shot regarding to the prophetic word, the, uh, the prophetic word governs. When he took the first shot and then uh, the prophetic word makes the, the whole body to be regulated, which is this homeostasis. And then the uh, enemy, he fired the first shot because we realize that at the time of the Apostle Paul, where many were trying to compete with him, Judaizers were trying to compete the attention of the saints and the churches, and also there were others who also wanted to, to say different teachings, competing with Paul, with their Greek culture, in which democracy prevails. Why is Paul causing monopoly to the prophetic word and others cannot prophesy, so on and so forth? All of those are lies created by Satan exactly to, to have the church to lose focus on the prophetic word because the, word, the prophetic word comes out from the mouth of God as the word that feeds the body, that nurtures the body. It gives direction to the body that governs the body and especially makes a circulation of life in the body and gives balance to Amen. the body. 
Well, the enemy fired this first, uh, the first shot and the second shot was on the organic functioning of the members in the body of Christ with clericalism. And clericalism came, and I've mentioned to the saints in Revelation 2, even though I did not read it, but let me read it now. Here we, in Revelation chapter 2, in verse 6, here we read, But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. There in the church in Ephesus, in the beginning of the first century, even though this system of hierarchy was not yet formed, but there was already somebody working to form it, especially with the, uh, the influence of Judaism, because among the Jews, there's this class of the priests and the other tribes. They are the laymen. So that I tried to implement that in the church. And when they, they, we got to the church in Pergamos, it was already implemented in verse 15. In Revelation 2, 15. Well, it seems that we lost the audio of Brother Pedro. Beloved Brother Pedro. Brother Pedro, we cannot hear you. I apologize. Brothers of IVPT, please help us. I don't think he can hear us. Well, so this came from Judaism. This is a copy from Judaism. Until today, unfortunately, there's this effect of Judaism also in Christianity. So this create this even an opportunity for the second century Ignatius who was taken at the the, the, the the church fathers, the apostolic fathers, those who follow the apostles way back, okay. The Apostolic Fathers, they were the ones who followed the Apostles. Clementus followed the Apostle Peter. I'm sorry, Ignatius followed the Apostle Paul. Ignatius is one of the followers of John. But unfortunately, the Apostolic Fathers, they had great privileges because they had followed the Apostles. The people in the church, they really honored them. But they, uh, let me read what Andrew Miller mentioned about them. Unfortunately, this is something that they soon departed from the, the doctrine that were interested to them, especially in regards to the church government. We hold this is important. According to Andrew Miller, the letters are not the word of God. You're in the field of tradition. And for expectation, it is that they would have teaching similar to the apostles, but that didn't happen. Text of the nations, nations, this is very severe. Andrew Miller says, nations and all, all other parents, all, all apostolic fathers are totally different from the Holy Scriptures. So in this way, the, uh, the Apostolic Fathers, they created a government because the Lord did not raise another apostle exactly because of the atmosphere created back then. They were all looking for the preeminence. They were all trying to be the first. They we're not giving important to the word of the apostles. At the end of Paul's life, 
all of Alpha Omega abandoned him, so no longer giving value to the apostle to his word. John's time was the same thing. Iotrephus was a leader in the church and then no longer appreciated the apostle John. He did not receive missionaries that he sent. Rather, he drove them out. He cast them out. He was competing with John. That is why this environment reigning in the last century, the end of the, 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 the first century, made the Lord have no environment to have the prophetic word. And without the prophetic word, there's no government in the church. This is the main point. Not only that, but also having the word came in the uh, government of the bishops that, that caused the bishops to, to give direction to the church. That was based on their opinions. It was not based on the word of God. So that caused a great damage, uh, beginning the terrible degradation which got to today's time. So even today, we're not free from mediators, intermediaries among the clergy and the laymen. Clergy are the ones who really understand the Word of God. They know things as for God's services. And the laymen, you have only to bring their donations to the, 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 the meeting, to the service. That would be okay. That, that caused a dead religion and that put an end to the living organism. Church, which is this living organism, which regulated by the prophetic word, by the circulation of life, the homeostasis happening in the body, all of that was finished. It turned into a dead religion, a dead organization. So let me restate that. Two points, the prophetic word and the enemy of God. Uh, hit it, and nobody gave any more value to the prophetic word. Second, there was the emergence of the clergy, was highly privileged. He received honor, especially at the time of the Church in Pergamos, where the Emperor Constantine adopted Christianity as a state religion. This caused all the clergy to be lifted up to the, the leading ones, including to the political leadership. Imagine privileges they, they had attained, the high positions they were raised, the rich. Riches and money, all of that made uh, the church to be greatly corrupted. And when there was the emergence of the church in Thyatira, the Roman Catholic Church then took the system forward. We have a system not only of priests, but also of bishops, archbishops, card cardinals, and then the Pope. So this clergy system established, completely established, and got to rock bottom at the time of the church in Tatara. But when God began his recovery around the Reformation in Sardis, so they was not able to recover this point. Clericalism continued. And if we don't have priests in Reformation, we have pastors, teachers, uh, ministers, and they were called this uh, were called pontiffs. The pontiff, I explained in the message, it means the one who builds a bridge, that is, one who serves as a bridge to connect common people, the lay people, and the earthly things to the things of God. So they were the mediators, the intermediaries, but we don't, we don't only have, we only have one intermediary. Christ is the only mediator. We, all the others, we are brothers and sisters. There's no distinct classless hierarchy. So the lack of not giving importance to the prophetic word ended up with the supply of the church, the church government, and also making up this hierarchical system of clericalism in the church, an intermediate class, this put an end to the function of the living members of the body of Christ. So unfortunately, the Lord had no more church 
as a living organism, you'll fulfill his work through this living organism. So praise the Lord today. The Lord is recovering in our time. This broadcast in Germany proves that all that joy it is because once again, the Lord today has this living organism being lived out by us, even though we have a lot to attain, but praise the Lord, the essence was attained. And I think that we have among us saints who really appreciate the prophetic word, make themselves immersion in the word, transcription, especially through our teens. Today we have trips and captains. We have mighty men of David. We have uh, supply corps. We are all involved in this organic functioning of the body of Christ. Today, once again, praise the Lord. We can experience this homeostasis, this inner balance for us to live and to work for the Lord. This is happening in our days. This brought us much, much joy in Europe, right? The Lord really confirmed the Lord is advancing among us and will advance until he comes. Amen. Now it's your turn. We also, we did a visit to the Museum of the Valdenses. Alessandri translated to us that they even did immersion. That the Lord was always trying to restore this connection to the tree of life. That he wanted to make this life circulate in our midst. And today the Lord has encountered through our midst, through the prophetic word, through the immersion, through transcription. All of, all of this together working the supply corps, there's a function for everything. There doesn't need to be anything. The Lord is already restoring through the word. And the word being restored, it restores joy. We don't, we don't see this joy anywhere. You look around, you look at the people in the world, the people we encounter, but when we're together, when we're together with the saints, Ernesto has a, a great testimony that we're, we're full of ecstasy. It's a joy that makes us truly function to execute our function, which is first as a serve, servant, and for us to do this with joy. It makes no sense. It's truly out of the box. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. No, it's a true fact that we have seen these past few conferences that the body of Christ, the church, it's not an organization, but it's a living organism. And Brother Pedro has helped us to see because the the word is what brings the life it brings life to the body and it makes the body function in an organic manner full of life just like we experimented in the conference so i touched a lot that the lord is bringing us back to the principle back to the beginning for us to, because we are, and to continue experimenting the word, inculcating the word, the word in our hearts. The Lord has given us this privilege of the prophetic word for us to be here in Birmingham, England, the UK. And we have experimented this because we received this word. And this word is by fact truly moving us and making us function. We don't we don't have to wait for someone to come to to give us this this energy to do something, but we receive the order from the the teachings of the apostle and through fellowship this this word this life is being circulated and it is bringing this true joy, this joy that we have experimented in the conference by following closely 
following Brother Pedro, this privilege? No, sir. May I take advantage and share a little bit about your testimony? Because so the saints know, Andrea, this is a wonderful testimony of what the Lord did in Birmingham, where Ernest Ernestson and his wife Marilyn is. Praise the Lord. They felt as in common and ordinary members, because I'm speaking about clericalism, it's very good to use this example. Understand organic functioning. They perhaps in traditional times it would be receiving and desiring the coming of somebody, one more co-worker, a worker, somebody who would help them to start a church life in Birmingham that would be more prevailing. But well, praise the Lord. The Lord used them. What I want to say it is that this shows quite well the organic function Amen. in the body of Christ because Nasser and Marilyn, what did they do? Since they had no experience in the work, they did not know what to do to raise a church. They had a burden, but they did not know how to do it. They simply remained close to the word. They heard the word with appreciation to practice anything they could practice. And then they began to go out and being fed by the word and nursing on the word. And with this fire in their heart, the Lord was the one that was had the heart that pumps blood through the body, passes through the aorta. The aorta sends blood to all the members in the body of Christ. So today, no, there's no need to be waiting for an expert to raise a church, to strengthen the church, right? We all receive from the heart to, through the aorta, the coming supply of blood, supply of the food, circulates. We can also have this life to be passed on forward. When we, this life passes on, things organically function, they begin to happen, you know? So I want our Ernesto to share with us a little bit because they began to practice it in a simple, very simple way. In a short time, lots of people were contacted and uh, some people were baptized or ready to live in the church life in an intense way. Share with us a little bit, Ernesto, for Andre and also for the saints who, to know about this living testimony. I mean. Oh, Lord Jesus. It's, we're truly experiencing what the word is working. I was speaking with my wife, my father-in-law that is also living here in Birmingham. We were breaking the bread and all the Sunday meetings, but it was very conventional. But we were persevering, persevering with his heart of being useful and faithful to the Lord, always truly following, continuing to be faithful. And we see that the prophetic word, the immersion in the word, practicing this with my wife, the transcription, you sleep and wake up with God doing war cries, persevering in this, the things started happening. Today I was speaking with my wife. We don't even know how these things have, have happened, but with such joy today, simply following closely and practicing, following closely the prophetic word, truly appreciating it, believing it that the word does the work, and it's up to us simply to believe and receive, inculcated in our hearts, and to make it circulate, to flow our mission, to depend to dispense it to the rest of the body, but also to the streets to practice, put in practice the prophetic word. And we began to do that. Not missing out any lives, not missing any lives. We would That life would end, but we would be transcribing everything that Brother Pedro would share. But after the live, we would continue trans transcribing of what had been left out or something for us to touch more of the work. And then go out desperately to the streets 
and we began to practice that because we don't have capacity, we have no capacity, but the things began to happen. We were practicing the word, going out to the streets, praying for people, dispensing the prophetic word, the literature, and also asking, and also asking the Lord that going out, we go out to the streets, my wife and myself, but we were asking the Lord because the brother Pedro had been sharing a lot about the teenagers. I was like, Lord, we also need to have this fire, this burden here with the teenagers. And the Lord sent a teenager here to our region after fellowship in England. And we were going out together to pray for people. And he approached a Colombian person. And it was after a lunch because we had lunch together and this Colombian was there. And this teenager approached her, prayed for her. And she saw him as a teenager and she has a son the same age. He was like, I want my son to do the same thing that you do. And then she invited us to go visit her house. And then we started to visit her and take care of her. And then after two fellowships that we had at her house, we talked about the baptism. And then that same night, she was baptized and her son was baptized. And we continued taking care of her. And she brought, she also brought her friend. And then we also baptized her friend and the son of the friend. The most interesting, the fantastic thing of seeing the word operate is because we didn't do anything. We simply immersed in the word with her. And each time that we met up, we had fellowship. It was to bring her closer to the word of God, because this is the word that's going to operate and do the work in her life and her son's life. And she shared something with us because she wants to open a coffee shop here. Teenagers. You want to say, oh, you got you, you guys need a meeting hall because you're meeting in houses. There needs to be a meeting hall for us to do the meetings, for us to have this living, the normal living of the church life. Saints, I think not even a month passed, not even a whole month. She said that in the following week that all of the legal work it worked out. And she was going to be able to open the coffee shop. And she said that this coffee shop is going to also be an open space to, for the saints to have fellowship there. And from there on, we simply saw it's to simply transmit, to transmit what we received through the prophetic word. Just like Acts 2.42, it states, in fact, truly what we are living here, persevering in the teachings of the apostles. You receive the word, you love the word, you appreciate it, and also in fellowship. The Lord the Lord adds on to it for us to have a normal living in the church life. And the Lord adds on those to be saved. And that is what we're we're truly seeing here. You didn't notice, Andrea, this wonderful thing the Lord did through these saints so simply following the word. The Lord gained the lady, and today it also was made concrete her dream of opening this cafeteria. In the end, this cafeteria serves as a meeting hall for the church in Birmingham. And lots of people, several were baptized, several have been saved, and are all in the church life. So, you know, this is an example of all those everywhere. Today we have in Africa brothers there who. Uh, oh, may the Lord send an expert, somebody to help, or so on and so forth. But all, oh, for all, we have saints in Korea. We have saints everywhere on this earth. Perhaps they're waiting someone who are more skilled, or more experienced to come. But if each one can follow closely, love the prophetic word, put that into practice, we as a living members in the body of Christ, see the Lord can do many things anywhere. 
this word works anywhere Amen. as long as among people that they were created for that. Andrea, I think you're crazy to say something. I'm impressed. The body of Christ has the power of the Lord. So if the members just simply function through the midst of the circulation of life, God does his, no, he executes the power. When Satan usurped to destroy this love of for the prophetic word, he was trying to put all these positions, hierarchy, trying to make it into a, you know, an organization, seeking position, seeking more power. And each one has your position and you can do stuff. There's the specialist, but then there's someone on top. But in the body of Christ, the prophetic word that's being stated, being shared, it's restoring unity, restoring the functionality of each member. Just look at what happened in Birmingham. So we have we have the lives in Birmingham, England, in Porto, Portugal, and in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Brazil. We don't even know what happened. But it's that. You just simply go closer, get closer to the prophetic word. You appreciate it. You transcribe, you immerse, and then you go out to the street and a teenager shows up out of nowhere. This is the functioning of the body. This is such a beautiful thing that we are living today. The members have their function and no one wanting to go beyond their function. But this this is this is marvelous. I, I didn't know of this this experience, but this is marvelous. It's very marvelous. And after the conference, until yesterday, actually, Brother Pedro, we received the cold porters from Lisbo Lisboa, Portugal, here in my house. And she called me. She called me. Oh, the missionaries, the missionaries are coming, right? I want to I want to prepare something for you guys. You see the life circulating. It's the, the word doing the work in, in all places. It was wonderful. The Lord's desire from the time he took the people out of Egypt, everybody manifested his desire in Exodus chapter 19, right? In verse 4, we read that a number of times. Let me read it for you again. In Exodus 19, 4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, this is the most important point. If you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, that is to hear with diligence the word of the Lord. But to hear this word, it's not a theological word. It is not a word, oh, this is somewhere in the Bible. No, this is my voice, my voice, it is a instantaneous word. When we indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, this is the word the Lord is speaking through his prophet, his apostle. If you hear my voice and practice it and to keep my covenant, this is the main point. And then everything begins to work. You shall be my special strike here to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. It shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God actually always desired a people, a kingdom, where we all serve the Lord, we are all priests. His dream not to have hierarchy, to have this class of priests and common people. He never wanted that. And also in First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But your chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a whole nation, his own special people. The Lord chose us to be what? To be uh, uh, priests and kings. We are all priests who can be used to build up the body of Christ. And then I finished message with Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12. We have some brothers who 
or more gifted, like apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, they are not a special group or a special category of people in the church who would replace the rest from their functions. No, they are for the equipping of the saints for all the members in the body of Christ to be perfected and to function for the building up of the body of Christ. And also finished by saying the function of it. The Lord can perfect us also in our function. Sorry. It doesn't mean that I began with a function that I'll be finishing with the same function until the Lord returns. The Lord can perfect me, to enlarge me, to put me in a function that is more and more to supply more people, to convey the prophetic word to more people. So the function, according to our exercise, according to our faithfulness in functioning, functioning is for what? It's not to establish my position in the church. No, functioning, it is to supply blood, supply the word. To supply life for the whole church to function. On the other, I also said, perhaps on another occasion, I don't remember if I said in this message, that Lucifer he was faithful in his function that God placed him. He was the seal of perfection filled with wisdom. Beauty, he functioned really well in his place, but one day, because he was so perfect, he then went beyond of his function. He wanted to get to positions, to exercise positions. God did not give it to him. This is dangerous. So when the Lord gives me a, pos a function, I must be faithful to my Function when I overstep my role, when I want to uh, exercise a function that God did not give it to me, then iniquity comes in, then sin and rebellion. So it's important for each one of us to know what our function is. We, went to, we need to know also the Lord will be adding more. So we will not be always the same function for the rest of our life. The Lord will be giving us more and more and more, but He will give us. Not we ourselves, for us to overstep out of ambition, wanting something that God did not give us. Okay, so I think these are some precious lessons there. May the Lord really to bring this forward till he comes. So we are growing, right? So may the Lord more and more to have more faithful members functioning Let's go and preach the gospel all over the inhabited earth. Let's have other people to function as well. And certainly, the Lord will have his will be done. No, the glory will be for him. Amen. You can go, Ernesto. Thank the Lord. It's all for the perfecting of the saints, for the building up of the body of Christ. And we have experimented this here as well. Be having a heart that to, to be useful towards the Lord, but also the Lord is working and perfecting us on how to get into the word, how to immerse in the word. Well, we began just being a, being simple. Sometimes we'd go out to the streets, still using our own words, but we had the experience of participating in the GPC Gospel Perfecting Center in Lisboa, Portugal, for us to be perfected, being perfected by the that the brother that the Lord gave the brothers to be used by the Lord. 
and we had this experience in Lisboa. And we were perfected there and we came back with more fire, with more burden of truly being a faithful transmitter of this word. And like how Brother Pedro was helping us with the dinner there in Germany, being simple, praying for a person. And then after we had the privilege, we also had GPC in Shinarin in London and also encouraging us to go to PAC the uh, advanced coal-porting outpost for us to be perfected. And all of this is for us to simply to have the word working, operating in us, for us to be faithful to tra transmit. And that's what we have been received. We have been receiving. And so simply for us to function. Our function is as servants. So we have to simply transmit what we have been receiving, which is the prophetic word. Amen, oh Lord Jesus. We have enjoyed very much, Andre, with the aspect of being faithful here in Europe. We have seen that the Lord is advancing, advancing for us to truly step on the dragon's head. And we have been faithful. Brother Pedro has been sharing about the family group meetings. And here in the city of Porto, Sports. We have two family home meetings, and this family meeting, the family group meetings, also has worked together with the body, with the function of you know inviting people to participate. Sometimes there's a new young one that comes up, that's a fruit of co-porting, or another young one from the church. in a city near port and they go to the family group meeting and then they go to the sending meeting and then she was at a house of teens and she was serving she was serving in the house of teens so it's many many miracles all based on the fidelity you know being faithful engaged functioning Brothers who support, the saints who support. It's like just like Brother Pedro said that time. Oh, call call Billy, right? The 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 brother that sets up the transportation, the rides. And this Saturday we're gonna have a house of teens in Agda. It's a city near nearby here. They're the churches of the north region of, of Port here in Portugal. And Braga, there's one teenager. And Avedo, there's three more teenagers. And then it comes together in Corimbo, which has one more. And each 15 days, we go doing this to different cities. And this has truly been setting on fire because you have the saints that are going to be in Agda. Then there's always a saint, the, a brother or sister that's going to help with the rides, with the food, so with the supply corps, working, functioning, the family group meetings functioning and working. The services of the church are functioning. So Europe today, it is functioning at an organic rate because no one here has a contract. No, we don't. We don't send like, you know, oh, a letter. We don't have a contract that we're going to do this. This is how it works. No, but it works organically because it's a living organism, a living body. And we have experimented this. Thanks to the Lord. And that's it. I gave them a challenge to all the churches in the north of Portugal, especially in Porto, of no teen, and I, I gave them a challenge that next time that I visit them, I want to see 15, 20, not to say 50 teens. I want to work a little more stronger among the teens. In Birmingham also. I ask you once again, forgive me for my uh, my setback. And since the time is a bit advanced, uh, Andrea, who can we ask to pray to finish? Amen. Let us let's ask for Kayo to pray to end the live. We had a live tonight 
on Instagram and YouTube, even with the delay, the technical difficulties, we had a lot of people watching. So just watching the transmission live for this life to circulate and the joy, the joy being. Can I can I give a quick announcement before the prayer? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, of course. Lord Jesus. Saints, today, in this exact moment, I'm in Koi. It's the center of works in Europe. And it's being a it's gonna be in a a center to receive all co-porters of the world. It's an excellent opportunity. Sometimes you come here in the center and it's already functioning. We're finishing the dorms, the sleeping areas. But there's also the centenarian region. I went to London last week and I know I know in the north countries of Europe, they're planning the dates, but there's gonna be these mission trips, right? So they come here, they stay a moment here, a time here, they have the experiences, they consecrate. Imagine, we were doing war cries in Germany in the streets and there were neighborhoods, German neighbors, they were doing war cries together with us. So there are many experiences that I believe in this, in this way that the structure is already being prepared to receive the, the brethren, right? So all of those who have a heart to serve, we have received many co-porters from Brazil that have been having many positive experiences with strong experiences. So that is the call. So so your your invite, your announcement is come, come here, come serve in Europe. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you very much for this live. For all of those that were able to participate, that the Lord truly can restore your word in our midst. So that we can follow closely to continue circulating this word among us, bringing us this joy this joy of living together, the truly, the body of the church. The Lord has this, this dream, this goal. And now the Lord is showing us the way to form and generate this desirable church until the Lord comes. That we can live in fellowship for all eternity. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you very much for all the churches for the conference in Africa. That's gonna be a great a great step for the Lord's return for every brother here. Amen, Lord, we love you. We thank you for all of this opportunity. Jesus is Lord. Uh, we'll take advantage Amen. of Andre and to say this. So the Kaya mentioned about uh, the work and the center of work in Europe. I want to give you good news that we are now doing the work of the first phase of the dormitories. But praise the Lord, when we visited, we uh, realized that the Saints Caillou uh, ended up doing the the uh, the ground floor that was not that was not uh, it was not used for dormitories, but then we he helped us for the, the ceiling height. We 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 had expected for the number of people, and we can double that. That is, instead of us be concerned about doing the second step of the dormitory, the first step you can have double capacity, have only have a module in the middle, a place for for meeting co-porters or meals and do the laundry and all that. So this will be will be easier to to do. So I'd like to take advantage and say to the saints that if any of you still want to offer for this. 
we are still lacking a little less than 40 quotas, 12 installments of uh, 15, 20 hei. So still some saints, Lord, touch your heart, want to participate. Still, we're still with, uh, missing f nearly 40 quotas, 12 installments of 15, 20 hei's. So look, contact the co-workers in your region who have an account the church in San Carlos to deposit this amount. So want, let us know so that we can complete the number of those quotas that are still remaining for us. Who knows in this step already be able to, to double the number of dormitories. Amen, beloved saints. We are finishing up our live. Thank you to all, to Brother Pedro, Caio, Nesto. Goodbye to all Amen. the saints. Amen. Hugs to all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.